there's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down Hey everybody, if you're already subscribed, welcome back. And if you're not, please do subscribe. Um, in this video, just kind of going to recap what this project actually is, because I don't think everybody who's watching my videos knows the backstory and watches these old videos. Um, so yeah, over the last three plus years, I've been building this camper van, and it started just as a 1979 Ford Econoline that I just planned to rhino line and toss a futon in the back of just for you know lake trips around uh, my hometown. But that escalated quickly, I ran into van life, on the internet and got obsessed with watching those videos. So it quickly turned into a full-fledged camper van build with solar, running water, you know, the whole works. And after that was finished, my friends said it should be four-wheel drive. And they said, you should just do a chassis swap. It'd be so easy. And I said, no, no, okay. <laughs> so that's where things really took a turn. So I pulled the body off of the original chassis and I bought a rolled 1999 Dodge Ram 2500 uh, truck and I pulled the body off of that as well and pulled the 24 valve Cummins engine out and I ended up doing the body swap onto that chassis and building a 4BT Cummins diesel engine for that as well. Um, so yeah, it took quite a while to actually, you know, fabricate everything and connect point A's to point B's and make things actually work in a way that it'd be feasible to take on a trip. Um, but yeah, it ended up working out and I had a successful 12,000 mile journey across the United States and Canada so far. Um, and I've stayed a total of about 80 days in the back of it. And it's actually quite comfortable. I went through my storage boxes just to show you guys what I brought with me to keep this thing on the road. You know, you gotta think, you know, traveling alone and sometimes being deep in the mountains with no service and you know varying weather conditions it's pretty intimidating at times especially when you're lost um you know you're, you're relying on just the mechanics of everything to work as it should as well as relying on uh, your own engineering and your own mechanical ability all right, now that you know what this thing is, I'll go ahead and take down these two storage boxes, which I used exclusively for tools, spare parts, consumables, just anything I could think of that would uh, be useful in any sort of repair. You know, there's a million things that could have and probably should have gone wrong. Um, so I wanted to be prepared for the worst. So I'll take those down now and we'll go through everything. Easier said than done. <laughs> All right, let's start going through the boxes. We'll start with this one. And for fair warning, they are an absolute mess right now. And I think it's this one it had an oil jug leak in it. So everything's pretty gross. All right, so of course, a gallon of 15W40 uh, for engine oil. Got 50-50 coolant, power steering fluid, brake slash clutch fluid, of course, WD-40, brake cleaner, Diesel 911 diesel treatment. Kind of fix a flat because the first like 6,000 miles I did, I didn't even carry a spare tire. And I was up in the mountains by myself in Canada. Uh, not, not a great decision. So now I've got this and a spare. Here is a new steel braided line and some other fittings. Um, that'd be for the, the turbo oil feed line. And that's what actually caused the fire the first time is that steel braided line melting and spraying oil on the hot side of the turbo and exhaust manifold. Um, and I was able to completely fix everything else and be ready to be back on the road. But this is the one part I had to order special last time, so I made sure to get a spare. 
Got a few different types of gasket material. Just never know. Need to cut something. Even if it's crude, have the ability to cut some gaskets on the road. Some spare fuel line. Some more spare fuel line. The, uh, the feed and the return lines are different sizes. Oil soaked rag. Oh yeah, got some 5W30, it's for the generator. A couple of used belts that are still good, but just not perfect. So I, I brought two just in case. Got duct tape. Heavy duty paracord. Teflon tape. Guess we've got some compression fitting sleeves and replacement compression fittings. Uh, Russell Advanced Adapter, and that's for the slave cylinder on my clutch because it's a specialty part, so I figured I'd better have a spare just in case. I've uh, got a coupler for my radiator hoses. Oh wow, this bag is filled with oil, but just some spare AN fittings and other compression fittings. This is one rubber cap to bypass your uh, coolant lines for your heater core. And you know, there's two different sizes. This is just the one that I picked up right now. But yeah, I'll show you actually. This is one that I had used and they constantly crack and blow out no matter what. And I don't know how many I've gone through, but it's given me a lot of trouble on the road where you know I'll be cruising having a good day ready to go somewhere and then all of a sudden I see steam and my temperatures are going up pull over it's hard to see because you know you've got a clamp around it and as soon as it, you're not running anymore it's not pressurized really so you have to leave it running to actually see it spraying out so anyway long story short I smartened up and I just ran a loop with actual hose instead of just capping them off um, yeah, huge hassle. Never buy these, never use these. Got red RTV gasket maker in an oil soaked package. This is a fuel resistant gasket dressing. I tried to use it for my, uh, my fuel tank top cover, but it turned out I just wasn't getting it tight enough. Uh, I had to buy a specialty tool, which is in one of these, but I had to buy a specialty tool for that a uh, fuel tank cap to kind of uh, grip onto it and be able to actually tighten it all the way. Another coupling for my radiator. Leftover hose from when I actually did run a loop from my uh, coolant ports for the, uh, for the heater core. Blue thread locker, got JB Weld, more JB Weld. Just have some 18 gauge wire plumbing strapping, some more couplings, uh, ones for the turbo or turbo piping. The other one's another one for the radiator. Got spare motor mount bushing. Got a special AN fitting for the turbo oil feed line and another compression sleeve. U joint, custom uh, alternator bracket, just in case, because it's something I made, won't be able to buy anywhere. Got some ship linkage bushings, some smaller vacuum line, steel braided cable, piece of flat stock steel, a 4,000 pound scissor jack, the other, the only other jack I have is uh, my high lift jack. Staple gun, vice grips, and that'll do it for box one. All right, box two.
Got a 151 piece eye hook assortment. Sheet metal screw kit. Zip ties, of course. A complete, oh, a complete spare hub assembly for the front. I heard some squeaking coming from one of the wheels and you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if a wheel bearing goes out soon. So went ahead and got a new hub assembly. Wood screw kit, small hose clamp kit, strap wrench, more JB Weld, <laughs> DeWalt drill, wireless drill, cordless drill. Wood saw, got some steel repair. It's made for high temperatures like exhaust. So it's up to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, didn't use it, but wanted it just in case something on the turbo or exhaust were to leak and I couldn't fix it properly. Got a 35 amp switch, which I've used a couple of these because I did a terrible job wiring the vans, so I burned them up. <laughs> Some bigger hose clamps for the turbo charge piping. Some cutoff wheels for the drill. A little electrical repair kit with terminals. Got a metric O-ring kit. Big spare bolt kit. Rear main seal for the 4BT, because it's leaking and just never know. Could probably pull it off on the, on the side of the road if I needed to. Wouldn't be fun, but I could do it. Smaller strap wrench, light tester, electrical, what do you call it? I don't know, can't think of the right word, but light tester. And here I believe we've got a crappy flaring tool for brake lines. Yep. It's not the best, but it works. It's what I use to make all my brake lines and I haven't had one even leak, so it does the trick, but it's not the best. Spare electrical wire, different gauges, drill bits, sledgehammer, more hose clamps, broken axe, which I actually used it after it was broken with the sledgehammer. My wire stripper, Another broken axe because I'm too damn strong. It was cheap, trash. Some ratchet straps. I got some more in my ammo box right there. Regular pliers, side cutters, a little file. Then here's that specialty tool to tighten up or remove your fuel tank cap. It's adjustable, universal. Other pliers. Funnel for the generator. And another round file. So yeah, that's everything in those boxes. I might as well go ahead and see what's in that uh, ammo box. I kind of forgot. Yeah, just have more ratchet straps, um, some bungee cords, crescent wrench, lighter, uh, butane, so yeah. And then of course, I brought a Craftsman 189 piece tool kit, which has been great. You know, just have a full kit that everything's there still, everything works, everything's clean, and just in one compact package. Um, so definitely recommend, even if you already have tools like I do, I've got a ton of tools at home, I uh, definitely recommend picking up something like this, but also remember, you know, uh, a kit like this doesn't have pliers, doesn't have a side cutter, definitely doesn't have a hammer or anything, you know, electrical wise. Um, yeah, I, I could have screwed up and not realized, oh yeah, crescent wrenches. No crescent wrenches in here either, which 
you know, are pretty important in certain situations. Um, yeah, de definitely a good purchase. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I know this one wasn't necessarily for everybody, especially unpacking the boxes, but honestly, I like to watch videos like that from time to time. Kind of gives you an idea of something you might be missing in your rig that could really save you down the road. Um, but yeah, the next video will be focused on identifying issues I do have with the van and kind of some funny ways I, I worked around those issues on the road and then lining out my repair plan as well as some upgrades that I'll be doing soon. So again, thanks for watching and hopefully see you soon.